Spencer Compton was born in 1674 and was educated at both St. Paul's School and at Trinity College. He was later sent to Middle Temple, one of the four inns of court. Compton's political career started after an argument with his brother George. With his family aligning with the Tories, Compton chose the Whigs as his political home. He attempted to win the seat of East Grinstead in the 1695 general election, but was unsuccessful. However, he returned in 1698 to run unopposed for the constituency of I winning at a by-election. He would go on to run unopposed again at the general elections of 1701, 1702 and 1705. His early days in Parliament were marked by beginning a partnership with Robert Walpole and by being a prominent Whig in the chamber. Compton climbed the political ranks in 1707 where he became Paymaster of Pensions, where he stayed for the next six years. Running unopposed again at 1708 in the general election, he became increasingly active within Parliament. Compton was also chairman of the Committee of Privileges and Elections and managed several bills. In 1709, he was nominated for the committee to draw up the Articles of Impeachment against Sir Cheverell, who was in trouble for preaching anti-Whig sermons that also spoke about threats to the Church of England. At the 1710 general election, Compton was dropped as a candidate for I by his patron, Lord Cornwallis, due to a disagreement. Compton was also unwilling to risk standing anywhere else due to his involvement with the Sir Cheverell case. He retained his position as Paymaster of Pensions, however, after the Tory government took office that year. This was perhaps due to the Tories wanting to maintain the support of his family. Compton returned to run for the seat of East Grinstead in the 1713 general election and won the seat. This election saw the Whigs gaining back power and Compton beginning to seek more power, aiming for a position high in the cabinet. However, this didn't come straight away. Compton received the lower office of Treasurer to the Prince of Wales, however, shortly after he was unanimously elected as Speaker of the House of Commons, a position he held from 1715 to 1727. In 1716, he was invested as a Privy Councillor. Compton maintained the position as Speaker despite the split in the Whigs in 1717, and he joined the Walpole Townsend Alliance, finding himself in opposition to the government of the day, the Stanhope Sunderland Ministry. Even after this split ended in 1720, he managed to maintain his position. Compton, also around this time, formed a reputation of being a lax speaker, someone who wasn't very careful in his words. He is cited to have said to an MP who complained of being interrupted, No sir, you have a right to speak, but the House have a right to judge whether they will hear you. As Walpole became the most prominent minister in the Commons and the Cabinet in 1721, there was speculation about his future if George I would pass away to be succeeded by George II. This was because George II was more favourably inclined towards Compton rather than Walpole, and he even said that he would replace Walpole with Compton upon his accession. In order to avoid this, Walpole kept Compton within the government and within positions of power, appointing him paymaster of the forces from 1722 until 1730. Compton also entered Walpole's government as Lord Privy Seal in 1725 and was also created a Knight of the Bath. When George II succeeded his father in 1727, he sought to bring about the change in leadership he had promised. However, Compton was not perceived as a man of great ability, described by a contemporary as a plodding, heavy fellow with great application, but no talent, specifically that of talent for being in the highest office. Compton proved unable to compete with Walpole's proposals for an allowance for the king. At a meeting between the three, Compton declared himself he was not up to the task of government. From here, Compton developed and maintained a hatred of Walpole for the humiliation. This was his last serious chance of holding real control over policy, and his influence within the chamber sharply declined as a result. He still remained on very close terms with George II, however, this was a time where kings couldn't personally select their own ministers in defiance of Parliament. That era was ending. In order to remove him from the Commons, Walpole raised Compton to the peerage as Baron Wilmington in 1728, and two years later he was created Viscount Pevensey and Earl of Wilmington, and appointed Lord President of the Council. He kept this last position until 1742. Compton became increasingly associated with the Patriot Whigs, those most critical of Walpole, but within Parliament, generally kept close to the official line of the Ministry. In 1730, he attempted to form a coalition between these Patriot Whigs and the Hanoverian Tories in an attempt to bring down Walpole. This failed, however. Compton threatened to resign, however, during the excise crisis of 1733, he failed after he was bought off with the promise to make him a Knight of the Garter, which he duly was. This further weakened any following he still commanded. 
In 1739, Compton was involved in the creation of the Foundling Hospital, an orphanage for abandoned children. This charity became London's most fashionable way to prove one's philanthropic credentials, and therefore had very notable board members, of whom Wilmington was one. After Walpole resigned from his positions in 1742, Compton succeeded him as First Lord of the Treasurer and Head of the Carterfray Ministry, and therefore Prime Minister. He worked closely with the Secretary of State, Lord Carteret, in order to secure the support of the various factions making up the government. Due to Wilmington not holding the position that long, there is little information surrounding his reign. However, he was described as a forceful Prime Minister and also grew notorious amongst his cabinet for taking measures without reaching consensus. His strong work ethic took its toll, however, and his health gradually deteriorated. Compton remained in office until his death when he was succeeded by the Paymaster of the Forces, Henry Pelham. Spencer Compton died unmarried on the 2nd of July, 1743.